Uh, good morning, Pak Irwan. Hi. Hi. Oh, good morning. Good. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Mm. So, first and foremost, can you tell us more about Swap Energy here in Indonesia? Okay, uh, Swap Energy Indonesia is trying to provide the infrastructures for um, two wheelers, uh, EV two wheelers. Uh, yeah. So, because uh, from the beginning, I always believed that charging never makes sense for uh, two wheelers in Indonesia. Look mm. at the look at the uh, the activities, the daily activities. If you spend just one hour charging in the middle of the street, you bring a lot of uh, hustle so we believe that swapping is the only solution for people to transform into a combustion engine to uh, electric motorcycles okay so how does it work basically is it like i know uh, we uh, phones that we used to use before we use smartphones you could actually have a spare battery so if you run out of battery if you ran low you could actually switch it out is it a similar system so basically someone using a swap battery would be able to change on the fly uh, with a pre-charged battery that they have on hand? Yes, uh, definitely. For mobile phone, it's different. I mean, you can, you can, I mean, most of the mobile phone that you can actually last a day or mm -hmm. at least half a day, right? right? But for electric motorcycles, uh, for those active users like you, uh, on the average that you only last for 50 to 60 kilometers, like most Indonesians people, are those who are depending their lives on the, they live, uh, they, I mean like Gojek, Grab and mm -hmm. Lily Freeze, they spend, they, they travel from 100 to 150 kilometers a day. Right. So, I so it's, uh, they, if they charge their uh, EV in the middle of their activities, it will be downtime, uh, downtime for them. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, uh, that means less revenue, yeah. Mm -hmm. So out of curiosity, uh, this is, so basically it's the same system as you come to the uh, swap station and you get the battery swapped and you're instantly ready to move on again, that's it? Yes, that's it. Okay, so I'm curious now then, why is there still a reluctancy or hesitancy mm -hmm. for people to make the switch to an electric vehicle? Because, okay, if we talk about electric vehicles in the form of four-wheelers, some of them are pricier than yep. your normal cars, mm -hmm. and I can understand there's a bit of a hesitancy cost-wise, but motorcycles are something that is more of a, a preferred mode of transportation here in Indonesia. And considering the cost is much less than a car, why is this still uh, not many of these electric vehicles, uh, two-wheelers on the roads in Indonesia? Yeah, I think it's uh, at the very early stage. We are still trying to educate the market. I mean, they, uh, they hesitate a lot uh, from, uh, to switch from the combustion engine to EV, we understand because uh, we they haven't seen a lot of uh, infrastructures along along the road along the way. Right. Uh, so what if they a lot of questions are being asked? What if I, my, I run out of the battery in the middle of the journey or mm -hmm. whatever? Mm -hmm. So all this range anxiety it stops them from switching to EV. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, they want to have the uh, peace of mind that there's going to be more swap stations everywhere just so they have the convenience of being able to switch on the go whenever they can before making the switch. Got it. Yeah, so yes, my, definitely. So my question is, um, what do you think could convince, you know, uh, motor, uh, motorcycle, um, you know, motorcycle users, for instance, to switch to EVs because you said that's a challenge and you're still educating. Um, what do you think is the most effective point of education for them to tell them that look i mean is you know environmental awareness enough all right hopefully we didn't lose masirwan right there masirwan are you there well, we're going to try to get him back online we yep. may have had him frozen but this is a very unique uh piece of technology whereas all this time like i said one of the reasons that i'm still oh, looking for the here we go masirwan you're back yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Cut, Go ahead. Cut off, yeah. Oh, no, okay. All good. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. No, what, we're... what was the question earlier? The, the question was, um, you said that education is still, you know, educating the market was still a big part of this. And uh, what do you mm. think when you educate the market is the biggest selling point to, um, you know, particularly motorbike users to switch to EV? Yeah, uh, I think we offer to the riders uh, a better lower cost compared mm. to ICE. Mm. 
So they are they are lower cost in terms of uh, the fuel itself and also the maintenance itself. And also we, we believe that we have to deliver more models for EV, the one that's uh, more attractive in terms of design. Uh, mm. Because uh, two wheelers in Indonesia is quite unique compared to other countries. Design matters a lot. Yeah, definitely. We all love our motorbikes. So um, <laughs> let's talk about maintenance a bit. Since you mentioned maintenance, I, I'm used to you know bringing my car in regularly for service for oil changes. What sort of maintenance are we looking at when it comes to EVs? Uh, basically, for maintenance for EVs, only wear and tear. I mean, tire, brakes, wow. and the <laughs> the lubricant. That's it. That's you don't have to uh, change uh, what is called the oil or. What about the battery itself? How like, long does the battery, what is the lifespan of the actual battery in totality? The lifespan of the battery is about five years. So it's hmm. 1,500 cycles in total. So, but if you, if you are uh, using swap energy, you don't have to concern about the, right. Uh, right. the life of the battery because uh, it's maintained under our company. Okay. So out of curiosity, uh, I'm very curious because this is actually a really, really good way of seeing because at, at point of maintenance, it actually costs a lot less if you keep uh, if you swap instead of sure. using the same battery, right? As you just mentioned. Um, is your particular technology, I read here, for now, is only usable with the smooth line of vehicles. Can it be used for other vehicles as well? Yeah, sure. Uh, we are... Uh... But it's not like plug and play. There's there are some protocols to be followed because uh, it's an, it, there's a, the size is different and the communication protocols is different. We have to integrate in uh, before manufacturing. I mean the engineering things, how to align the protocols with their motorcycles or their motorcycle with our battery. Okay, now uh, speaking of the smooth line, you have a project ongoing now with uh, PT Pos Indonesia, I believe, where you are actually oh. um, going to be producing these uh, electric vehicles for deliveries, and this whole system will be in play then. And I can imagine if it's PT Pos Indonesia, it's going to be quite a wide or large infrastructure. Tell me about that project and how yes. it's going and what you have planned. Yeah, we have uh, signed an agreement with uh, PT Post to supply the motorcycles for, for their uh, for their riders. Uh, is we will we kickstart with uh, 1,500 units in Jakarta and the uh, and the satellite city. Okay. So we also uh, commit ourselves that we will build uh, the infrastructures like a swap network uh, in other big cities as well, so that they can come in there. So when is this project slated to uh, actually, when, when are we going to start seeing these riders on the road? It's already kickstart. Okay, there you go. So I think yeah. this, the reason I ask is because I think the more, as Indonesian, mm -hmm. sometimes we need to see this in action and in yeah. play before we actually make the commitment ourselves. And I think this is an important project and I really certainly hope it goes well because I think this will help um, kind of, you know, those that are still on the borderline, they'll be like, oh, they're using those electric vehicles and it seems to be going well for such a company or such a big entity like PT Pos Indonesia that they're likely to be more comfortable in making that switch. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I think so. And I was just looking at your website, by the way, smooth.id. I mean, um, personally, I, I see no issue why a motorcycle user wouldn't want to use the product. Design-wise, right? Design-wise yeah, as well. <laughs> and and if, you, if you calculate the cost, you know, um, uh, for maintenance and everything, especially if emission, you know, if emission approval is so important in the yeah. years, it's definitely a great buy. But last question, what do you think about the future of electric vehicles, specifically for the two-wheelers? Because um, we know that here in Jakarta, perhaps there are more two-wheelers than there are four-wheelers. Yeah, and you see there is a big target market. How do you think this is going to develop, especially with law enforcement and uh, emission, uh, you know, the emission decreasing goal here in Indonesia happening? Is it going to help your market as well? Yes, uh, I believe two-wheelers will move much faster compared to four-wheelers mm. uh, because uh, it's, it's much more affordable. I mean, the price compared to the combustion engine mm. is not so much difference. Some are, I mean, it's just around the price. Some are lower, some are higher. Mm -hmm. And with the, a lot of regulations has been already uh, 
released by the government to support the two wheelers EV. Okay. Especially at uh, a lot of tax reduction mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. cities like Jakarta, Bali. And also, uh, we believe that with the sentiments around the world that everyone, every country is going to EV. As some of the young, uh, the youth people, especially the millennials, they also see this is a is a thing that that's future. Mm -hmm. Okay, millennials they they love future. They don't want to go something like oh we want to stay here. And we don't believe in these EV things. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can definitely see that uh, turnaround happening everywhere around the world, especially here in Indonesia. I have one more question for you. Um, uh, one of the mm -hmm. concerns of people riding motorcycles or any vehicles in yeah. Indonesia is flooding. And since we're uh, heading into oh, rainy season, right. how does it uh, how is it different handling an EV two wheeler uh, when it comes to floods? Are they less susceptible to water damage and things of that sort because there's less working parts and there's no uh, real working engine like there would be a combustible engine? But it's electricity. Yeah, this exactly. is the yeah. This this is the thing that we have to educate to the market. Actually, as long as the battery connectors they don't get into the water, I think it is still be all fine. Okay. Uh, this is all you can avoid this thing by design. We do, how do we hide the plugs? Mm -hmm. uh, preventing from entering, uh, from preventing the water coming in. Okay. This is something so it's just like uh, if you see if you see a like, Tesla with the battery pack beneath yeah. the the car, right. they can go. Actually, they, they what they promise is they can actually ride a little bit into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true because yeah, most yeah, of these yeah. EVs, like their the batteries, are right on the bottom lining, and obviously right. you're going to get water down there. And if there's uh, it's mm. covered well, then there shouldn't be any damage. So that's a bit of a peace yes. of mind for those that are thinking of making the switch as we head into rainy season for sure. Anyway, Mas Irman, thank you so much for your time and uh, good luck with this. Uh, we really do hope that, uh, and yeah. me especially, and Okai as well, uh, for the sake of our kids, we do want a better future for all of us. So we do hope that uh, we're able to make the switch to electric vehicles much sooner than later. Take care. Okay, we can purchase our motorcycles. Yes, <laughs> thank definitely. You. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.